Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Now, real quickly here, uh, Hurricane Irma. You guys heard of this? Hurricane Irma? It continues to grind its way through the Caribbean. It is the largest Atlantic storm in history with sustained winds of up to 185 miles per hour. So if you're in its path, please don't be. If you haven't already left, please follow the guidance of your local officials regarding evacuations. But if you are staying put, might I suggest following the storm prep example of eccentric billionaire and guy most likely to make his own Jurassic Park in real life. <laughs> Sir Richard Branson, the goat-headed demon god, actually owns a private island down in the Caribbean, and he rode out the storm yesterday in his wine cellar. It's a smart move, because I hear the Red Cross only has Merlot. It's drab. <laughs> it's prosaic. It's plebeian. Now, Branson hunkered down with his team of attractive young people and posted some cool pics, like this one of them having a sleepover in the great house, and this one playing some sort of dice game, because being in the path of a Category 5 hurricane wasn't enough of a gamble. <laughs> okay, let's see who we eat first. <laughs> Joshua, go marinate yourself. <laughs> Good news, uh, they're fine. Many people are not, sadly. Now, if you want to help, tune in this coming Tuesday for the hand-in-hand -hand Harvey and Irma Hurricane Telethon airing on all the major networks. Give us a call. I'll be working the phones. And if it helps raise money, I'll also be working the poll. <laughs> all right, whatever it takes. I was young. I needed the money. Now, uh, I'm going to say something a little weird right now, okay? Bear with me. The Democrats won something. That is... Wow. Can't be right. Here's what happened. During a, a White House meeting about the upcoming agenda in Congress, Donald Trump sided with the Democrats on the debt limit and funding for Hurricane Harvey. Huge victory for the Dems. And you know what that means. It's squandering time. <laughs> but for the moment, just for the nonce, they're riding high. Because they got Trump to agree to their plan on the debt limit. You guys remember the debt limit, right? We talk about it every so often, okay? It's the amount of debt America is legally allowed to carry. And if we don't raise it every once in a while, we default on everything. And America gets repossessed by China. <laughs> and then I think we all move down to Richard Branson's wine cellar <laughs> to ride it out. Republicans wanted to raise the debt ceiling to cover the next 18 months, next 18 months, so the Democrats couldn't use it as a negotiating tool before the midterm elections. Democrats wanted to cover only three months, and they convinced Trump, possibly right at this moment, when Chuck Schumer appears to be saying, who's a good president? You are. <laughs> Yes, you are! You would never need! You would You're so good! Go get it! Go get it! Of course, this infuriated Republican leaders. One GOP operative put it this way he f***ed us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 And he didn't even take them furniture shopping first. <laughs> so, why? Why did Donald Trump side with the Democrats? People at the meeting say he was anxious to get a deal done fast. In fact, a senior Republican source described Trump as being in apprentice mode. <laughs> Yes, he was in apprentice mode, which explains why he kept calling Schumer Senator Meatloaf. <laughs> and Trump's also hinting he might work with the Dems on restoring DACA after he rescinds it. Chuck and Nancy would like to see something happen, and so do I. And I said, if we can get something to happen, we're going to sign it, and we're going to make a lot of happy people. Yeah, that is the best way to make people happy. First, scare the crap out of them, <laughs> then tell them there's a way out. It's like one of those Saw movies in reverse, okay? <laughs> okay, I've locked you dreamers in a room. 
You've all got green cards, but they're in your skull behind your eyeball. <laughs> Here's a broken bottle. Go for it. Happy people. <laughs> so, ha. Uh, then, <laughs> out of, no, no. Eventually, eventually. <laughs> Eventually, my impression of Trump will just be grunting. Just, just as intelligible. Then, out of nowhere, is this today? Then, out of nowhere, today, Trump tweeted, for all of those DACA that are concerned about your status during the six-month period, you have nothing to worry about. No action. <laughs> Yes, I tied you to train tracks, but don't worry, the train is running six months late. <laughs> so, it, it's an odd, unexpected tweet. And uh, so why'd he do it? Well, uh, later we found out why he did it. I said to him, I, uh, when he called this morning, I said, thanks for calling. This is what we need. People really need a reassurance from, from you, Mr. President. And boom, 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 the tweet appeared. Boom, boom, boom? Bum, 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 bum. I'm sorry, ma'am. I believe it's pronounced like this. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> bing, bing, boom, boom, boom. Bing, bing. So, we're finally seeing some deals happening. The art of the dealer is dealing it up with his art out there, bing, okay? Bing. And it could be because the president has found a new deal-making spot. Members of Congress are saying that Air Force One is Trump's new boardroom. So you know when you're stuck on an airplane next to someone who won't shut up? <laughs> Turns out it could be worse. <laughs> Apparently, the president has invited a lot of lawmakers onto the plane for private arm-twisting sessions, and it's effective. As Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart says, they can't go anywhere, they can't run away from you. <laughs> Same reason Trump loves dressing rooms. 